Hello, here we will discuss what critical section is and what the critical section problem is. First of all, both critical section and the critical section problem are all about process synchronization. Processes often use the same resources such as data and computer hardware. A joint usage of resources must be arranged correctly, that is synchronized, or errors can happen. For more on this topic, see our video Process Synchronization Race Condition. A common approach to using shared resources is this. Make sure that while one process uses a shared resource, no other process uses it. So only one process uses a shared resource at a time. Let's say that process A is writing to a file out.txt. If process B also wants to write to that file, process B must wait until process A is done dealing with it. It is important because if both processes try to write to the file simultaneously, the content of the file would be a mess, for example like this. Now, what does it mean that a process uses a resource? It means that the process executes the part of its program code that deals with this resource. So, in process A, these two commands deal with file out.txt, and in process B, these three. The trick is not to run these commands from process B while we are running these commands from process A. Or you can say it the other way around. Do not perform file writing A before B executes its file writing commands. Pieces of code from different processes that should not be executed at the same time are called critical sections. So this is the critical section of process A and this is the critical section of process B and they never should be executed at the same time. Two important nuances. First, when we say that a certain critical section is executed, we mean that the execution of this critical section has started but has not yet finished. So even if the process is sent back to the ready queue or enters a waiting state in the middle of its critical section, we still consider its critical section running and we still say that the process is in its critical section. To fix this small terminology problem, we can say that the process enters its critical section once it starts the execution of the first command of its critical section. And once the process finishes the last command of its critical section, we say that the process exits its critical section. So if one process has entered its critical section, then no other processes can enter their critical sections until the first process exits its critical section. Second, we are discussing critical sections with respect to processes, but threads can have critical sections in absolutely the same way that processes can. Now to the critical section problem. The critical section problem is the problem of finding a way to program different processes with critical sections so that once one process enters its critical section, other processes cannot enter their critical sections until this process exits its critical section. This is called mutual exclusion. In other words, don't run multiple critical sections at once. When multiple processes want to enter their critical sections and no process is in its critical section, then one should enter it and the choice of this process cannot be postponed indefinitely. This is called progress. In other words, keep shared resources busy and avoid deadlocks. No process should wait forever to enter its critical section. This is called bounded waiting. In the following videos we will discuss tools and techniques to solve the critical section problem. Let's summarize. A critical section is the piece of program code that cannot be executed together with another critical section belonging to another process. The critical section problem is the problem of programming in such a way that for different critical sections conditions of mutual exclusion, progress and bounded waiting are met. That's it. Thank you for being with us.